Pilots, welcome back to RC Air Training Command. Um, this short video is going to be about the three degrees of left-handed tendency, otherwise known as torque, p-factor, slash gyroscopic precession. What we're speaking to is the tendency the aircraft has to go left, and why does that happen? Especially under situations where um, there's not any airspeed already, there, there's no relative wind um, holding the plane kind of firm in the air. So really on takeoffs and go-arounds is where you're going to see this, these tendencies exhibited. Um, first we're going to talk about the torque um, degree of left-handed tendency. And that's where um, the plane wants to spin around the motor. And that tendency is exhibited in a, in a roll, well it's to the left, in, in, in a roll. Um, it's the same reason why a helicopter has a tail rotor, because without it, the whole body would want to spin underneath the blades. So, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was just saying, out of, Roll. The, of, the, of the law of physics, that um, if you have uh, an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, with the prop spinning in a uh, clockwise uh, spin, if you're sitting in the cockpit, the plane actually wants to roll on its own axis and go left. Right. And, and once it's up to speed, it, it's not such a prevalent type of thing being exhibited. But on takeoff, where you're not quite up to speed yet, that's one thing to consider um, when you're taking off. And it's a lot of times someone who doesn't know better is going to um, see that happening to their plane when they, gets broken. they think something's wrong. I remember when I was new, I, I thought there was something wrong with my plane. Not so much the, the roll as much as the yaw. Now, the second degree of left-handed tendency is created by the difference in angle of attack from the downstroke of the propeller versus the upstroke of the propeller. The downstroke happens on the right side of the airplane when you're in the cockpit. And what this does is it, in essence, bites more air which creates yaw because it's more efficient, it, it's doing more. So it's pulling the plane through to the left. And also, in, in this equation of left-handed tendency, you've got a side, a, a, a slipstream, the, the air column um, being forced down the left side of the aircraft, which also puts pressure on the tail surface and yaws the plane. Right. What happens is this air actually spins around the aircraft and when it comes up it will hit the left hand uh, um, part of the, of the stabilizer here and it will actually push and with that, with that um, much push along with your pull on this side, because what happens is, remember, it's this is less, this is more on the downstroke, so what it's going to do is this side, if it's racing itself, since it's all one surface or one prop, it just wants to bend around. Right. So it creates, uh, it's not really an artificial yaw, it's just an uncommanded yaw. And that's why right rudder which is yaw control, is exactly what's needed to counter that left-handed tendency. So when you're taking off, you're going to input some right rudder, and what's going to happen, that's going to counter that natural left-handed tendency, and you're going to be able to track straight. Um, as you get up to speed, you need a little less of it. It's one of those things you just have to practice. But there's nothing wrong with your wheels. There's nothing wrong with your airplane. That's a natural part of physics for full scale and model aircraft that these things are going to happen. The yaw is more prevalent on takeoff than the roll. Of course, you're still on your wheels, um, but it's something to be aware of. But it will want to pull you down. And that's the next degree of left handed tendency. Um, that's called P factor, otherwise known as gyroscopic precession for those who are technically savvy. And, and the best way to illustrate and explain gyroscopic precession is, is to, um, let's take it back to fifth grade science or something. Let's spin a bicycle tire in our hand. You can, it's spinning now, let's say. And you can feel the centrifugal forces kind of gyroscopically kind of holding it there. It's, it really takes some effort to move it. 
Well, once it's moving in a direction, once you change the axis and it's moving in a direction, it wants to follow that direction. You have to really fight hard to bring it back. So that's exactly the same thing that happens to the prop. You imagine the prop as a, a mass, a disc, which is spinning. And there's already something, the bite of the propeller, which has acted upon this axis. So what happens, especially in the tail dragger, is you have the yaw, but you've also got, once you're rolling a little bit, the tail is lifted up, you've started this wheel in motion, so you've got yaw and down a little bit. <laughs> so there's your third degree of left-handed tendency. Once again, being aware of it, steering your feet, rudder, and also being aware that there's going to be a roll uh, exhibit itself upon takeoff um, is something to be aware of. So when you're taking off, you don't have a lot of wind conforming yet to the uh, surface of the wing. It's up to you to fight these forces and keep from um, stalling the plane. You can take off um, with the right rudder input held in and some right aileron held in and, and keep it as straight as an arrow. If you do not um, do that, the plane is going to kind of take off in a crab, which is sometimes you can get away with that, sometimes you can't. It's best to keep the plane flying as smoothly through the air as possible. You know, if you're taking off like this, you've got a lot of drag induced on the airframe and you're flirting with the stall because the wings are in different spots. You, you want to fly it as smoothly as possible. So um, just be aware of that. That's a little prep for getting into the four channel um, Ultra Micro Trojan, which is going to be our flight lesson two here at RC Air Training Command. And that's a little bit of what we call the three degrees of left handed tendency, otherwise known as torque or P factor. People will call it all the same thing, but there are three degrees of it, so be aware of it. Go ahead and, and, and learn this stuff. And, and learn, you know, we suggest you learn it on a micro. Get your left thumb really in the mix um, in your flying because it's going to serve you well. And, and when it comes time to doing maneuvers and whatnot, you'll, you'll already be familiar with um, how to use your left thumb and not also influence your throttle because that's the real trick is to maintain a, a certain throttle input and still be steering um, the, with the yaw. So I come in on my Warbirds, I, I come in with a pretty good amount of, of of power and I'm fighting that P factor all the way down. If you're coming in with the with a nice idle and a nice uh, um, initial glide that the, the plane likes for your landing and then you do your roll out and things of that sort, that's great, you're not going to get the all. But if you're coming in, you know, with the nose up, just cranking it and it's coming down just like this because you're doing this power on uh, type of, of uh, Landing. There, that's more of a three-point landing. That's a, a landing right. slow. Right. This is more advanced, but some of you guys are already doing that and things of that sort. But as you work up to that, just know that that P factor is going to be there. It's going to take some some cross control type of input to hold it level in, in that kind of situation. And, and the bigger pitfall is the go around. If you're already going slow enough to land and you decide you don't like it and you gun it, you're really going to be fighting the roll. And, and the y'all all at once and you need to be Johnny on the sticks you know, holding some right um, aileron and, and some, some right rudder and you can take off that way. You know, flying off the grass field a lot of times I'm not going to do the longest takeoff roll. Um, it's grass, it's rough, I'm going to get off. So on those takeoffs where I'm, I'm taking off but the plane doesn't have a lot of airspeed yet um, like it would if I were taking off a, a long pavement runway. Those are the takeoffs where it's really more evident how, how useful the um, keeping the torque at bay can be. You see the plane take off in a, in a crab and, if you don't input that right rudder and, and that right aileron. So um, there's videos we've got up. There's a hopper hurricane takeoff actually off of a pavement strip where I didn't do a shallow takeoff at all, but a real high angle of attack climb out. And the 
only way I was able to achieve that was with crazy amounts of right rudder and right aileron because there wasn't much airspeed and all this left handed tendency in that situation w would have been enough to wreck the airplane had I not countered it. So it's pretty neat. You know, you learn more about this stuff than you ever thought you would um, when you're doing it. And, and when I was new, I, I thought there was something wrong with my wheels, but it's just physics. Um, they all do it. So, uh, yeah. So, with that, oh, the people themselves would get a kick out of this. You all, all y'all know about y'all now. <laughs> all y'all know about y'all. Y'all? <laughs> See ya. See ya.